still showing up Attitude of every Lazarus Your voice is calling me out You know, one of my favorite quotes from Bill, Pastor Bill Johnson was this, if we don't live by the praises of men, we will never die by their criticism. Amen. If we don't live by the praises of men, we will not die by their criticism. We live for Jesus. We live for the kingdom of God. We don't live for men. Amen. So when we don't live for men, we live for God, we, there's so much freedom. So hey church, how's it going to 16 family? I hope that you are doing fine. Today, this week, we're going to do a little bit different with last two weeks. So it will be something similar. So uh, FYI, all of this is going to be pre-recorded. Hopefully, by within next week, we're going to be back again. Where we're going to do a live worship experience with you guys live in the studio. Hey, we're Just doing so this. Class, you know, I think we are so honored having Pastor Alan with us. I know, right? Wow, come on, I'm just so Thank blessed. Thank you so much, Pastor Ellen George, for yes. sharing such a great... So if you tune in our service, we're just so grateful having you with us today. And then just we pray that God will, will bless you and can yes. even use you Amen. further to glorify His Amen. name. Yes. yes. Now, we also would like to thank you for those of you who have tuned in today to join our service. Yes. If you missed today's service, don't forget, tomorrow we'll have a rerun. But before that, could you ask?
Hi 316, Happy New Year. How are you guys doing? I am so excited to be with you today. I was supposed to preach at your church last year, but because of COVID, that didn't turn out. But I'm just so excited to be able to preach to you today. So I want to say thank you to Pastor Juan and the entire leadership team. Thanks for having me. I'm pumped. Are you pumped as well? And today, you know, we can be uh, responsive. It's a feedback. If I say something that blesses you, you can type in the comment section, amen, or preach it, or whatever you want to do. But let's, let's be excited for the Word of God. And I was told that your theme this month is gear up. Gear up. And I want you to get ready for this year with a word in season that I believe will bless you tremendously. Before we start, I'd also like to thank you for everyone who has given or you are planning to give. Thank you, your offering makes contribution. Anyway, I heard you prepared something for us. Yes. Speaking of offerings in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not frequently or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. So make sure when you give, give it with a cheerful heart. Definitely. Anyway, speaking of giving with a cheerful heart, yes. if any of you have just received any blessings and you would like to give praise to God, or maybe you. Hi everyone, what's up? My name is Andrew. Welcome to 316. Welcome home. Wow, it's been so long since I've said that actually. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're new here at 316, welcome. 316 is a youth ministry that is part of Gibe Perje Chekakuju that has a vision to empower the youth and create a safe space for many. We're a community, we're a ministry, but most importantly, we are a home. So, right now, uh, due to the rising coronavirus cases here, here in Jakarta, we have decided to pre-record everything and not do it live like we used to in the past. So, for the safety and the health of our ministers, we are pre-recording everything. And hopefully in the upcoming weeks, we'll be joining you guys again, doing it live like we used to. So yeah, so right today, we'll be having someone very special to us, someone that we all know and love here at 316. We'll be having our youth pastor, Kojuan, will be sharing the word of God today here with us in 316. So yeah, make sure you're expressive, make sure you type in your fire emojis, make sure you type in your Yes, amen, whatever you feel like typing in our YouTube chat room right now. So yeah, also wherever you're watching this, make sure you're also expressive. Maybe you're in your bedroom, you're in your dining room, you're in your living room. Maybe you're in the car, you're going somewhere and you're watching this YouTube service right now. So yeah, make sure you're expressive. And yes, without further ado, let's get on to worship right now. Bye. Shalom 316, welcome home. We are glad you're here with us today. We're going to start today's service, so make sure you're ready for the Lord. Amen. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm louder
watch the darkness bleed. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. That's why we bow down before you and give you praise because you deserve it no matter what situation we're in right now we know that your strength is stronger than our thoughts than our problems narrow is the road may seem I'll follow where your speed my life may be I will give you every piece I hear you call I am available I say yes Lord
tune in our service you can type in the youtube chat welcome home hi everyone so thank you everyone for joining our service and keep supporting our service i know throughout this uh, difficult moment i'm very sure you'll be blessed by our online service and then not only that on the behalf of the pastoral team we would like to apologize because we need to change the way we do our service the style of our service has been changed due to the rising uh, of uh, positive COVID-19 cases. So we need to follow some protocols and we need to make sure all our uh, volunteers and workers are safe. Again, I apologize, but I do believe despite the style of our worship, uh, he is still the same God. Uh, then of course, obviously we can still enjoy his presence. And I'm very sure today we are going to be blessed by the word of God. And I'm praying for everyone, even in this difficult situation, God will protect and keep us safe. And truly, that's my prayer for everyone right now, if you tune in our service. So before, again, before we start the sermon today, I encourage, I ask everyone to just uh, start the sermon with a prayer. So let's unite 
in prayer. Father God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day. Thank you for still blessing us. Thank you for everything that you, you've just trusted in our life. So now we are going to listen and hear the word of God. Holy Spirit speaks very personally to each and every one of us. And we are so ready to listen to the word of God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody who believes, shout, Amen. Come on, are you excited, guys? So if, if you're excited, you can type on the YouTube chat. You can put that fire emoji. You can do the right now. Be active. Be participate. And, and, and learn to honor the word of God. And if you still remember, so last month, we have been discussed the teaching series, what we call the Gear Up. Basically, throughout the month of January, we are being prepared, we are being equipped to embrace something new that God has in store for you and me in the year 2021. We are so grateful. A lot of uh, speakers uh, preach the word of God and we are so blessed. Again, I'm, I'm very blessed by the sermon that is preached by Pastor Clement last week. I'm just so blessed. And then... Starting from this week, on the month of February, we are also starting the new teaching series. We call it Free People. And especially today, we are going to learn that the right rules can set you free. So today, starting today, we have new teaching series, Free People. And specifically today, we are going to learn that the right rules can set you free. Maybe when you heard that statement, you have a lot of questions. How come rules can actually set us free? We have this common thought that rules are meant to be broken. Boundaries are meant to be challenged. We hate rules because we always think rules are limiting us. Especially you and me, you know, when I was a teenager, when I was at your age, we have a set of rules, a lot of rules. That is, that, is, that is being taught by our parents. We can't do this, we can't do that. There are font restriction, uh, you know, rules about who you can hang out with, late night party, or whether you can sleep over in your friend's house and so on. There are a lot of rules. And you think those rules are actually limiting you. How come you can, you can be free if you have set, if you, if you have that list of rules? And right now, you can write down in the YouTube chat, you know, what, what is your rules, especially or uh, commonly or especially in, in your home, in your place? What is your rules that your parents send up to you? And again, in many cases, rules are very frustrating for us. We hate rules. We always think rules are limiting us. We can do much thing. We are being, we, we are being controlled by that rule. And how come actually that rule can set us free? But let us learn today what the Bible teaches us about rules and freedom. And I hope after this sermon, we can have better understanding on rules and freedom. What actually the Bible teaches us about rules and freedom. And I'm very sure if you pay attention for the next couple of minutes, we are going to be blessed by the word of God. Especially we are going to learn about rules and freedom. And essentially, today I would like to share with you three main things about rules and freedom freedom. When I prepare the sermon, again, I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed and I'm very sure all of you who just joined today's service will also be blessed by the word of God. So today we are going to learn three things about rules and freedom. And the point, the first point that I would like to share with you, listen to me carefully, rule helps to prepare and divine us. Again, we think rules are limiting us. But if you pay attention on what the Bible teaches us about rule, the Bible is actually teaching us that rule actually helps to prepare and divine us. Let me take you to the story of Esther. I'm very sure you know the story. And it was taken from the Esther chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Let me read it loud to you. Before a young woman's turn came to go in to King Sarsus, she had to complete 12 months of beauty treatments prescribed for the woman, six months with oil of myrrh and six with perfumes and cosmetics. And this is how she would go to the king. Anything she wanted was given her to take with her from the harem 
to the king's palace. Can you imagine? It took 12 months just to meet the king. And at that time, that was the rule for a woman to meet the king. Maybe you think it's not reasonable. It's just too much. The rules are beyond your mind. 12 months. It's ridiculous. It's way too long. But if you think it carefully, the rule is there. Because one day, Esther is going to be the hero to save a nation. Imagine, if at that time, Esther did not follow the rules, she will not be prepared to meet the king. And she will not able to be the hero to save her nation. Wow. Again, maybe you think the rules are just too much. It's control us. I don't know what to do. It's just unreasonable. But the Bible teaches us, actually, in many cases, sometimes rules are meant to be there because it is going to prepare and define us. Just like Esther. One day Esther know that she is going to save her nation. It was taken on Esther chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. This is what the Bible said. He sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. But who knows that rules are actually preparing you? Who knows Esther needs to go through that rules? Because one day, Esther Going to, is going to save a nation. Maybe you think it's just too much, it's so frustrating, but you will never believe the rules are preparing and dividing you to be a better person to fulfill God's destiny in your life. Rules help you to achieve the better fashion of you. Just like the story of Esther. Esther, go through the 12 months of preparation. I'm not saying all other rules that Esther need follow. Because Esther knew she was prepared by that was because one day God will use Esther to save a nation. Wow. Sometimes rules are just unbelievable. A lot of rules. But God can actually use that rules to prepare and divine you. Amen. Are you blessed by the word of God? I'm just so blessed. So again, Rules are not actually limiting you. But in fact, rule helps to prepare and divine us. Amen? That's the first point that we learn. And I'm going to, to take you to the second point about rules and freedom. And this is, will be the main point of today's sermon. So rules not only help to prepare and divine us, but actually, rule gives us true freedom. Hang on, wait a minute. Rule gives us true freedom. Again, you will probably raise a question right now. How come rules lead us to freedom? How come rules lead us to a true freedom? But before I, I, I elaborate more on this, I want to illustrate you on this. Have you ever watched a sport, any sport? It could be tennis, it could be basketball, NBA, uh, football, soccer. It could be any sport. There is a rule to be followed. If you love to watch NBA, there is rules to be followed. Basic rules. You cannot kick the ball. Basic rules. You need to dribble and a lot of other things. But let me, let me ask you a question. For a basketball player, that rules, do you think it, it is, will that limit the freedom for each player? Do you think if, 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 if basketball, the rules is you cannot use your, 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 your leg to kick the ball, without using the leg, do you think it will affect the freedom of, of each basketball player? 
I don't think so. Actually, it's the other way around. Following rules give the true freedom to each team to enjoy the match. Actually, when they follow the, the rules, they actually give some true wisdom and then actually they can enjoy the match. Imagine, if there is no rules, we cannot enjoy a beautiful NBA match. Because in the match, imagine LeBron James dri uh, dribble the ball and then someone just coming over and kick the ball. You, you can enjoy. But just because of LeBron James following the rules, they can actually be, be a LeBron James. He has that freedom. Because they know. Freedom lies within the rules. And that's the beauty of our freedom in Christ. Actually, within the rules, that's the true freedom. Imagine if there is no rules. LeBron James will not able to dribble and do the freestyle and everything and so on. Because when LeBron James wants to dribble the ball and someone just kick the ball. But because of there is a rule, we can enjoy it. Because freedom lies within the rules. Freedom lies within the rules. If there is no freedom, uh, if there is no rules, there is no freedom. Let me tell you, there is a big difference between chaos and freedom. When you take away all God's commandments and rules, you have chaos and not freedom. If you want to take away all the rules, it's not actually a freedom, it's a chaos. Because what we learned today, freedom lies within a role. God has set up, God has prepared and everything. God has set up all the rules so we can actually enjoy our freedom. There's a big difference between chaos and freedom. Let me, take you, uh, let, let me take you to the story of first, to the story of creation. This is on the Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded to the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Even at the beginning of the creation, God designed the entire creation for freedom. God gave Adam and Eve a freedom. They can actually eat whatever tree, but just one tree that they cannot eat the fruit, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God designed entire creation for freedom. God loves to give us freedom. But it doesn't mean there are not rules. Again, freedom lies within rules. If there is no rules, it's a chaos and our freedom. That's what we learn. But God designed the entire creation for freedom. We were not created to control each other. If, if you imagine, God can actually build a high fence to protect the tree. Can actually build a high fence and then and, and Adam and Eve will not able to reach their hand and unable to grab the fruit. But that's not what he wants. God doesn't want to create a robot. He wants he want to create us. He wants to give us a true freedom. But again, in, in a freedom lies within a, a rules. But God wants to teach us. I give you freedom. But they are something, they are the rules. They are, they are the rule of the play. They are the game rules. Because whenever, if, if there is no rules, it's a chaos and not a freedom. Again, God can then build a high fence to protect the, the tree, but that's not what he wants. Because this is what the Bible teaches us. Where there is extreme control and abuse, there is not love. Where there is extreme control and abuse, there is not love. Boundaries are not something you set another person. They are something you set on yourself. That is the real freedom. Maybe you think uh, uh, God, God created this as a boundary for you. No, no, no. 
the Bible teaches us actually boundaries is, is something that you set on yourself. It's not on the other people. And it's not meant to control the people because God doesn't want to do it. God wants to give us a true freedom. And within that true freedom lies within the rules. But essentially what God teaches us is I give you that freedom, but I want you to set the boundary within you. You got my point? And that's the real freedom. So the key word to achieve your freedom is not by get away from all the rules, but it lies within obedience and ownership. You need to obey and you need to take ownership. You can take away rules from freedom because at the moment you take all the rules, it's chaos and not the freedom. And when God said about freedom, he wants to actually set the boundaries within you. You set the boundary for yourself. And, and our God is not the type of God who limits you and needs to do many things. No, he gives us the true freedom. But again, a true freedom lies within the rules. And by saying that, God is actually want you and me to set the, our, our very own boundaries. Again, if God wants to limit everyone, he can build a high fence just to, 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 to block, to stop Adam and Eve, to grab his hand to, to take the fruit. But he's not doing that. Because he wanted to teach Adam and Eve the true freedom lies within the rules. And, and actually, when I give you freedom, you need to be responsible to set the boundaries within yourself. Amen? Are you blessed by the word of God? So the second point that we learn is actually rule give us true freedom. And it leads us to the very last point of today's sermon. So not only rules helps to prepare and divide you, not only rules actually give you true freedom, but actually this is my last point. Rules actually gives you security. Rules gives you security. It was taken on the Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 until 27. I read it to you. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet, it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and, and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell with a great crash. Obedience is the key to freedom and security. And actually, when God illustrate the, the when God, uh, essentially what God tried to teach us in, in this verse is actually, again, you have a freedom. You want to build your life on a solid rock or you want to beat your life or you want to you want to you want to build your home on top of sand you want to build your life or your home as, uh, as in, in a solid rock as your foundation or are you going to use sand again god gave you freedom but if you pay attention god is actually want us to build our life on a solid rock this is the way to play. God wants us to build our life on something that is solid. Don't play around with, 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 with that freedom. If you pay attention, if you obey, if you follow the rules, God actually essentially wants you and me to build our life on a solid rock. You are successful not because of, of you get away from the rules, but because you walk on that rules. You get successful in this life because, because not because you get away all the rules and you can do whatever you want. No. When you pay attention to the word of God, this is what Bible said. If you pay attention to the word of God, you're just like a wise man who built your life, who built your home, who built your house on top of solid rock. So again, if you pay attention to the word of God, if you follow the rules in your life, it will give you security. It's just like a wise man who built their home on top of a solid rock. So again, 
you are successful not because of you get away from the rules. You get successful because you work on the rules. You listen to the word of God and you build your life on top of a solid rock. Jesus is speaking of the absolute necessity of building your life on the right kind of foundation. Because the foundation is what holds everything up. It's what holds everything together. Foundation matters. And again, if you want to build that foundation, you cannot do it by, by, by neglecting all the rules. No. By listening to the word of God and following him follow the word of God, just like what the Bible said. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So if you want to be successful in this life, do not get away from the rules, but hear the word of God and puts them into a practice. Then you'll be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Amen. Are you blessed by the word of God? So again, rules helps to prepare and divine you. And then rules gives us true freedom. And rules gives us security. Are you blessed by the word of God? Um, uh, I hope it's actually the sermon speaks to your life. And uh, I want to close today's sermon by uh, reading a very last uh, Bible verse for today's sermon. It was taken on the Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 and 39. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Maybe right here, right now, you think there's just too many rules in following Christ. Uh, I need to do a lot of things. But actually, the Bible essentially teaches us. Actually, the rules is very simple when it comes to following Christ. It just comes down to two main rules. It's about loving God and loving people. If you try to adopt these rules in your life, now you can understand. Actually, the rules can set you free. What am I trying to say is, again, two main rules, loving God, loving people. Loving people. We've mentioned a lot of rules that feel restrictive, unreasonable, and unfair. But what if we thought about these rules differently? God is teaching us about loving people. But, but what if you respond and react differently about the rules? Let's say when, when your parents say, do not, uh, do, not, do not go in back at home until at night. You maybe think the rules is unreasonable, you want to go in not. But what if you think, because of you love others, because of you love your parents, you don't want your parents to, to worry about you until at night, then you need to go home then it will create different perspective for you. Instead of you think that it's ridiculous, the rules to limit me going back, you know, late night, I can't do much thing at, at late night. What if you think, oh, I'm, I do this because I love my parents. I don't want them to, to, to worry about me, where I am and so on. All right, so again, if you try to love others, then you're going to learn to appreciate the rules. Because I'm very sure rules are prepared. There's a reason for it. Amen? And this, the, the second rules of following Christ is not only loving people, but also loving God. And again, loving God is everything. His love will set us free. No matter how many times we fall, no matter how many times we broke the rules, His love remains the same. He will accept you as who you are. Amen. So I want to close today's sermon. The right rules can set you free. And according to Jesus, the greatest rule is love. When you, when you learn to love others, you learn to appreciate and embrace the rule. And when you learn to love God, 
that you will understand even his love is greater to you no matter how many times you fall no matter how many times you broke the rules his love remains the same god bless you are you blessed by the word of god i hope you are blessed by the word of god so let us ask you unite in prayer father god we give you thanks for the word of god Thank you for teaching us that actually rules are not limiting us. Many times you use that rules to actually prepare and invite us to be a better fashion of us. And actually we understand by now the Bible actually teach us even within the true rules that actually lies a true freedom. And if we learn to follow and obey the rules, we are going to build our life on a rock. Something that is very strong and no one can shake our life because we have you in our life father we give you thanks we bless all other people and father we believe throughout this difficult moment you will keep us safe in the name of jesus we pray everybody who believes shout amen